This is Andy Purwall for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm delighted to be joined by the WBC and the Ring Magazine world champion Tyson Fury here in Las Vegas. Tyson, it's finally fight week. How are you feeling first and foremost? Very, very good, thank you. It's good to hear. I've asked a few people in your, your team earlier. I was listening to you do your print interviews and it's, in my opinion, that the happiest and most chilled I've probably seen you on a fight week. Do you agree with that or can you recall a better time ahead of especially this third bout with, with Deontay? I feel good, you know, I feel relaxed and confident, as I've always been. Um, I'm never uh, beat up and uh, eat up about a fight. It's just a boxing match and I'm, I'm feeling very confident that I can win the fight. I don't know where the rumours or the reports started to come from, but some people started to think that your camp hadn't gone as swimmingly. I know you've obviously, you know, unfortunately, your, your baby had fallen ill when she was born. I'm glad to know she's OK now. And of course, your team caught COVID a few months back. How would you assess this camp now that you're in fight week? It's, it's, it's been a training camp, you know. There's going to be good days and bad days. There's going to be ups and downs. No one's ever 100% going into a fight, put it that way. Tyson, the first fight, most people had you winning comfortably. And the second fight, we obviously saw you produce a, a stunning stoppage victory. What do you expect us to see from you this time around? What are you expecting to bring into the bout? I'm just going to bring um, action. And I'm going to bring uh, action and ferocity. Do you think especially because we haven't really seen Deontay ever give you some form of credit for your performances in either of these bouts. Has he annoyed you all? Does he make you want to produce even more of an emphatic performance? Not really. You know, I'll take the win however it comes. Do you think this one will go the distance? Nope. I think I'll get him out of there. For you now, obviously, if you're successful, this being the third bout, Tyson, do you think this is the end of yourself and Deontay Wilder? Do you it think is you... the end of Deontay Wilder, for sure. Yeah. So you don't think you'll cross paths again beyond this? Definitely not. I'll give him that bad of an eye in this time. You'll never want to see me again. We talk about the psychological impacts of, of boxing, and especially because people talk about yourself and mind games. How much do you feel you're inside Deontay's head at this point, heading into this fight? I think I've never left his head since that round seven, since he got um, knocked out. And I've been haunting him ever since, and it's been 20 months, so... I, I would assume it's been a long, horrible, uh, drawn-out process for him. And uh, the fact that he's a loser now has probably sunk in, and he's admitted it to himself. So defeating him for the third time will be a lot easier than when he was unbeaten. Has it surprised you that he's stuck to his, his cheating claims and allegations against you, and he's mentioned you know, Mark Breland and his team spiking his water? Has it surprised you being so close to this... This third outing, he hasn't maybe had a change of opinion or he hasn't given you credit for your performances? Um, I don't need credit from Deontay Wilder. I just need him to turn up on Saturday night and uh, bring his A-game. And that's it, really. I don't really care what people say about me, whether they give me credit or they don't. I'm not one person who's interested in um, credit. Just go in there, get the fight won, go home to my family. That's it. How do you think Deontay will approach it this time around? I don't know. I don't know. There's not much else he can do, is there? Just come out and throw punches at me, maybe? He's released some footage, I'm sure you've seen it yourself, Tyson. Have you not seen any of his training footage? I don't see the stuff because I'm not on social media. So with that in mind, I'm going to ask you and put it to you. Some of the footage we've seen him release, he seems to be doing a lot of body work. Do you think with that in mind, especially with his power, he might look to target your body because you have a bigger frame instead of your head because you have brilliant head movement, it's hard to pin you down? I don't know. It doesn't really make much difference to me whether he hits me in the fat belly or he hits me in the face. It, will, it won't make much difference anyway. Um, if he goes down to the body, he leaves himself open to, to big hooks up the side of the head or uppercuts. So it's um, something that I'm not really too concerned about, to be fair, body shots. Would this win be the most satisfying out of the three bouts so far for you, Tyson, if you're successful on Saturday? Not really, no. It's just another prick that I've got to set about, to be honest. There's not much. There's not much I'm um, um, excited about Deontay Wilder. I've already beaten him twice. To beat him for a third time, I beat him easy the second time. So I sh I'm anticipating I'll beat him easy again. To be honest, and that's it. I'm not really too interested what he's going to do, unless he brings a gun to the ring with him. He can't beat me. That's it. Tyson, I'm sure you've been asked about it throughout the day. Obviously, Anthony Joshua suffered a defeat a couple of weeks ago. There was a lot of talk about you two having a potential bout earlier this year. Just want to get your thoughts first and foremost on his defeat to Alexander Usyk. I've not got much to say about it, to be fair. It was what it was. He lost the fight and that's it. It's boxing. 
was you surprised at all by his tactics, by the fact he went about trying to box with somebody who is widely considered one of the best boxers in the sport? Not really. You know, everyone's got their own game plans and they've got their own. It's none of my business anyway, you know, what other people do. I like to keep out of evil people's business because when you get involved in biz people's businesses that don't concern you, you usually get in trouble. So considering I don't like to get in trouble and I keep my nose out for people's business, I don't care what other people do. I only, I only care about what I do. And anything that can... What I do, I've, I've got control on, then I care about. But what's not in my hands, and that doesn't concern me, I have no interest in, or no comment, or no real concern. I saw um, the interview you did with Gary Neville where you mentioned that you know you used to talk to AJ previously, but now he just kind of blocks, you, blocks your calls and what have you. Since that fight, have you had any interactions with him? Maybe offered him any advice? I haven't spoke to anybody. I've been in training camp here in Vegas, minding my own business, keeping my head down, training for my own fight. Or else if I don't, the same fate will happen to me. With that defeat, how disappointing or frustrating were, frustrated was you, Tyson, simply because of the fact that there was that mega fight there, a lot of money at stake for both of you as well. How frustrating was it to have seen him fall short? Not really frustrating, to be honest. Um, a lot of money, but I've already got a lot of money, so a few more zeros on my bank balance ain't going to make or break me, to be fair. Um, and that's it. It doesn't really mean a lot. The, the money side of it was one thing, um, but it didn't happen. You can never count your eggs before they hatch. And um, and that's it, you know. There's not much to, to say about the matter. He lost the fight, and that's it. He lost to a better man. And when one door closes, another one will open. So there'll always be someone to beat up on, I suppose. Do you think you two will still cross paths at some point whilst you're both involved in the sport, or do you think that defeat has put pay to it? I think if he doesn't beat Usek in his rematch, I think he's finished. Retire. Done. How do you think he needs to approach the rematch? He needs to win that fight, no matter how he does it. His corner team's taken a lot of flack for the performance in that fight, for the tactics, and your dad in particular, he's pointed out he, he doesn't believe that the corner would give him the right advice. Do you think that's fair? I think it's pretty harsh to say, to be fair, that the corner didn't give him the right advice because you know, <coughs> we don't know him as a man. We don't know what he's like in the gym. But one thing I will say is Rob McCracken does know what he's like in the gym. And he does know his traits, he knows his guts, he knows his heart and determination, and he knows what he's dealing with, which we don't. My dad's only classing him like he'd look at me, with the same fire, passion and determination to win a fight, which you can't judge everybody the same. Robert McCracken will know exactly what's inside Anthony Joshua. And I believe that Robert McCracken gave Joshua the game plan to keep him on his feet throughout the fight. Because if he believes that putting his hands up and walking forward would have won that fight, then I'm sure Rob has got enough common sense and enough boxing knowledge to do that. He knows his own fighter. He knows he didn't have the gas or the ability to, to turn it up at any given time and take out, uh, Usyk out of there. Tyson, I've seen some people suggest that since the defeat to Andy Ruiz in New York for AJ, there's been kind of a, a bit of a block in front of him that he hasn't been able to let his hands go as much. He hasn't been able to throw those three, four punch combinations we'd been used to before then. Can you see that? Do you think there is something mentally stopping him from no. being aggressive? Or? No, I don't. I just think you need to be a certain type of athlete to be aggressive for a load of rounds in a row. We've seen him. When he opened up against Klitschko in whatever it was, round five, he took about four rounds off. So he doesn't have that stamina to sustain an attack for a long period of time. And Robert McCracken would know that more than someone from the outside would know. That's that. The wooden inch, well, I know it would do, but a bout between yourself and Alexander Usyk in an undisputed talk about it's still a very interesting one because of the styles. Is that still one which kind of you lick your lips at when you look at it? Yeah, you know, I got Wilder to deal with first and whoever's next after that, whether it's Usyk or whoever, even if I even fight again after that, we'll see. You know, it's, uh, nothing's guaranteed in life, so we've got to take one fight at a time and we'll deal with the opponent when they arrive. Just a couple of fights I want to quickly get your thoughts on before I let you go, Tyson, because I know my time is running out. Yeah. Uh, Dillian White, Otavalian, Otavalian, past opponent of yours. Dillian, somebody you mentioned who you'd be open to facing in December. Yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I think that um, Otto Wallen's getting a lot, of, a lot of credit for being absolutely set about by me for every round. Um... The only reason that he's been talked about in high regard is because he gave me a cut. 
Mm. But I still think he beats De uh, Dylan White. I think Otto Wallen will beat Dylan White. Moving forwards then, Parker Chisora too. Do you expect to see anything different with the outcome this time around? I think that's an exciting fight. It's one I'm looking forward to again. Joe and uh, Derek Chisora um, will always make for an interesting fight because they're out similar size, similar weight. And old Derek is a war horse and he will come for you. If, and if you don't hurt him, he'll be there all night. And finally, obviously, Tommy, your brother, there's a lot of talk about a potential bout with Jake Paul. What's your take on it? Do you think we will see it? And if so, what do you expect to see from Tommy? I think the fight needs to happen. Him and, him and uh, Jake Paul, Tommy and Jake will get the fight done. And um, if Tommy can't splatter Jake Paul, I'll retire him from boxing myself. He doesn't need to be a boxer. If he can't beat Jake Paul, forget about boxing. Because he's got ambitions of being a world champion. Never mind beating some YouTube guy. But it's a great fight for, for the social media world. And it's a great fight for all the kids and all the young girls out there who support them both. And it's a great fight for to watch. It's a spectacle. But if Tommy has got any ambitions on being a world champion, his name's Fury. If he can't beat Jake Paul, I'll have to change his name. How about that? I wish I could see Tommy's reaction because he sat behind bring me. So, Tommy, do you want to come and jump in? And oh, he doesn't man. want to. I'm sure. <laughs> Um, Are you agreeing with that, Tommy? Oh, I'm agreeing with him. Don't worry about that. If you can't beat him, your name's getting changed. To what, though? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson, just before I let you go, just want a message to Deontay Wilder ahead of Saturday night. A message Wilder. from you to Deontay. <laughs> Deontay, you little pussy. You're getting smashed to pieces. Bring your A-game and leave your excuses in the changing room. Shit house. <laughs>